I have one of my friends on, uh, 12-time NBA veteran. Uh, we have this unbelievable friendship and relationship, how it developed and got to this point, I don't know. He even calls me by my real name, um, which is Meta World Peace. And uh, <laughs> everybody, please give a warm welcome and listen to what we are going to talk about today. Frank Brukowski. Brick, what's up, brother? What up, Johnny? How you doing? How you living? So everybody, my I'm real good. name is Johnny, uh, J-O-H-N-E-Y. And then my uncle's name is John Sally. He wind up passing. And then they were like, we're going to call you John now. And the reason they called me Johnny is so they can get us in between. But he calls me Johnny and I love him for it. Bro, I am sitting here. I was, you know, we talk all the time. Um, a lot of times uh, um, we're enjoying our favorite cocktail or, um, you know, and, and we have great conversations. So I thought you'd be great on this show today. But before we get going... You were in um, San Antonio. And in yep. San Antonio, I guess uh, I can tell by my haircut it was 1989, 19, 1990, <laughs> 1989. It's a Gumby Fresh Fade. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my fade was unbelievable. It, was, it was, wasn't so cut well because we were in Houston. I mean, we were in San Antonio and I wasn't letting anybody cut my hair. But if we can put this picture up. Uh, this is him choking me. <laughs> and, and while he's doing, and that's, uh, I think that's Eddie Rush right there. We call that white Eddie, Eddie Rush. Rush. Yes. Dennis is in the background. Yes. You grabbed the wrong guy. <laughs> and I said, Rick, I said, Rick, Rick, the sound, Rick, this is sound. Now, Brick is a big dude too, man. He could have, he could have just snapped my head off. <laughs> I was like, it's sound. He turned around. He said, Oh, wrong one. And it was, it was my favorite, my favorite part. Uh, do you realize, do you remember grabbing me by the neck and why? No. Oh, it, when I saw <laughs> no. the picture, because the picture was on the cover of New York Times, I think, one of the big papers, and I remember just what you were saying. I don't remember, I went into a, like a blackout and I grabbed the closest <laughs> person to me and it happened to be you and you just kept on saying, Brick, it's me, Brick, it's me, Brick, it's me. <laughs> hey, don't kill me. Don't kill me. No, <laughs> definitely. Uh, Brick, so what are you doing now? I'm retired. I'm up in Montana, and we spend our winters in uh, Palm Springs. I worked for the Players Association 15 years. Um, retired a year and a half ago. Took my pension. I say I'm sliding into home. Right, you are. So look, this is when you mentioned that, and I told these guys, uh, and they told me just to hold it for the day. So the, you're in Montana. That's that was your summer house, right. and then you live somewhere else for your winter house, like. Right. Um, black folks only have one house. <laughs> if we got two houses, you got your house, you got mom and them house. Mom and them house is mom and them house. And then, uh, and for those who didn't understand my bionics, mom and them. So I call mom and them. So you got your mom and them house and then you got your house and explain how you, you have a summer house. How does that work? <laughs> so I was living in Oregon. My son was born in Oregon. I moved to Oregon from Manhattan Beach, California to be a father to my son for 18 years. He, when he turned 18, he goes, Dad, I'm out. I was like, me, me too. We went out in the rainforest. We moved down to L.A. to Hermosa Beach. I used to live in Manhattan Beach. Moved down to Hermosa Beach right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And my son was having anxiety, you know, and I was like, hey, just pump the brakes. Settle down. He goes, I don't want to be around these many people. I don't want to be, and he's 18 at the time. I was like, whoa, 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 pump, pump the brakes. We don't even know what this thing is yet. And so we're going to bed that night. My wife said to me, look, as adults, we can't get our brain around what's going on in this world. How can you demand of your son to pump the brakes? I said, all right, we leave. We left the next day. And we took off from Montana. And we get to Salt Lake, and we wake up to news of an earthquake the night before, 6.2, which is significant. Mm -hmm. So we're driving through Salt Lake looking for earthquake damage, running from a pandemic. And I turned to my wife and I'm like, when did we become part of a B movie? Like, is this really <laughs> happening? <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like earthquakes, pandemic. I don't even know what a pandemic is, you know. So anyway, we hightailed it to Montana, turned the summer home into a winter home by insulating and doing some projects. And uh, then we were here in the wintertime, and I, I can tell you how we started looking. It was in 1986, 87, 88, somewhere in there, 
Larry Kristobiak, who was the coach of Utah and played in the league for a long time, was the head coach of the Bucks for a while. He was on our team in San Antonio, and they scheduled a preseason game in Missoula, Montana. But Larry had been traded. So here we go as a team to Missoula, Montana, and I start looking around. I'm like, oh, my God, this is unbelievable country. Unbelievable. So I started looking. So I was good friends with Charlie Sheen at the time. and we Charlie Sheen, buy a ranch. the actor. We, the, the actor. We're going to buy a ranch together in Montana, and we did. And that's how I ended up here 30 years ago and ended up selling that place and buying a lake house on my own. Um, so I live on the same lake as Phil Jackson. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> you just can't get past. You can't slide past the fact that you and Charlie Sheen bought a, a ranch together. Is that the bunny yeah. ranch? <laughs> uh, uh, hunting, uh, horse ranch, hunting ranch, fun ranch. So wow. when I was at the Lakers in 85, 86, I had just seen Platoon. And I go to the game the next night, and Charlie's sitting in the front row, and I'm just like, Oh, my God, I'm just starstruck because the movie was great, and I invited him in the locker room, and we ended up being best friends for a good 8, 10 years. He was a great kid, great sense of humor, really generous, really loving, just, you know, what everybody saw was a tragedy of late stages of addiction, but Charlie's good people. Wow, that's something. So I, love, I love that. that was, you, you slipped that one. I, I had no idea that was gonna, you were going to say that. So you get and the this. The good news is he paid for half of everything, and he, I think he visited the ranch twice. Oh, boy, you got <laughs> over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, these jokes that I have flowing right now that's going in my brain, I can't drop them off. So let me let me let me hit you with this one. So Brick, you and I were talking, and we're talking about going, and this is, and I'm telling you, you're gonna love this. Chris, go love this. Uh, you said there's no way that Curry would be able to drive down the lane unmolested. And the word, the fact that you even used the word molested. What <laughs> do you think would happen if he were playing mm, 80s, 90s? How long do you think he would I, last? I'll give you an example, and I could send you a picture. We're in the Western Conference Finals. I'm with Seattle. We're playing... Utah, John Stockton, who I never really liked. I don't think anybody really liked John Stockton, but he was a great, great player. And he comes in the lane, and I would lead with my hands like I'm going for the ball. I'll catch you with an elbow if I need to. You know, it's, it's what happens when you come in the lane and you go hard to the hole. And I caught him. I gave him 11 stitches, and he's walking away from me, and blood's dripping down his cheek. And I'm 37 years old at the time. I can't do I don't have much left in the tank. He yells at me, that's all you can do anymore, Brick. That's all you can do. I said, yeah, Johnny, but I'm still pretty good at it. Go fix your eye. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So do you think the NBA – everyone blames us. Somebody said that we were bad boys, and I say, no, there's more guys like Brick and Scott Hastings and and uh, some other thugs, Bill I'm going to say. Anthony Mason. Yeah. The list goes on. Oakley. But that that lead now, you understand, these guys are worth five hundred million dollars. Some of these guys are worth what some companies are worth. You can't you can't put them on that put them on their back. So when you watched, are you entertained by watching the NBA now? Yeah, yes and no. You know, I, when, let me back up for a second. Where where I put the blame and the credit is on David Stern's shoulders. When David came in at thirty two, was the commissioner the youngest commissioner of any major sport, he brought in his marketing genius. And prior to him and his marketing machine and genius, you had to win championships to be a superstar. And Mm. you can go down the list of Michael and Larry and whoever, um, Magic. And then he came in and said, no, 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 no. You don't have to win championships to be a a superstar. All you got to do is have Wall Street like you and sell sneakers. We'll make you a superstar. So that's where I give them credit for making us all a lot of money. But the game's a little dishonest in my view, right? It's like anywhere in the world, on any basketball court, if you're a guard and you go into that forest of big men, you're getting hit. There's contact. Yes. Nowadays, it's like you just go unmolested to the hole. And I'm like, how's that? I don't understand. Mm. Everybody, Frank Murkowski on the phone. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, I was looking at your career and checking out that 
you, you spend two years a couple of places, one year a couple of places. Uh, why was that? They just brought you in as a bruiser, or did you piss somebody off in front in the front office? No, well, I played eleven years for three teams. Yeah, roughly, and the others were pit stops or whatever. But you know, when I came in the league, I all I could do was beat people up, just bang. <laughs> And I slowly developed a game. You know, by the time I left, I was I was a legitimate three point shooter. I shot forty per, forty some percent. I had both hands down low. I could shoot the mid range. So I, I had uh, I had some skills, but I had to develop that. But when I first got in the league, I was just a banger. Is all I was. Oh, everybody, and definitely and a choker because you got me right around my choker throat. Banger. Yes, That's man, it, I, I, I was nervous. I was nervous. I saw it in and your all eyes. You do is choke one guy, and you become a choker. You, you become a choker. You get it. You get it going. All right. So we have the Celtics tonight up in San Francisco against the Warriors series two or two. I'm gonna go to my old vet. Tell me what you think is gonna happen. You know, I don't. I don't even know anymore. With the way these guys shoot the basketball and Steph and Clay, it's like I can never bet against them. Mm. Right? I, I, I just can't. You know, they can turn it on. It used to be you're down 12, 15 points. You know, a couple minutes left, the game was pretty much over. Now it's like, well, this is just when it gets started for those guys. It's like they start. I mean, John, you you tell me. Have Have you ever seen anybody shoot like this? Uh, from where he shoots from. Not from where he shoots from. And we used to have a rule. First two 100 wins. But that That's out of the window because these guys are scoring 126, 136 points. So it used to be, hey, first two to 100, you know, you can you can see it tapering down. Right. Not anymore. They and, they figured plus, it out. And plus, if a, if a guy did a dance after he had a shot, he did a little shimmy, he got touched up the next play. Like, <laughs> That was back in our day. That was embarrassing. Like he was trying to embarrass you. Where now, everybody does. It. Yeah, everybody has a dance. Everybody has a dance. Hairstyles. I, I I don't even remember getting a haircut during the finals. I don't even remember getting a haircut. I don't remember anything except uh, having to be back there the next day. These guys got hair color. Their their lines are amazing. But they are superstars, and they 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 have become a walking superstars like right. an NBA player walking conglomerate yeah when I when we played in Milwaukee you walked across the street to the Mecca you know what I'm saying if if a person got an autograph from you you would like you know it's like oh okay yeah I'll sign that right. and keep it going you. but now mm-mm, not the way it is these guys are walking um companies I would say and you and you can speak to this better than I can Johnny I played in one final they started three games the exhaustion was overwhelming and I wasn't even playing that many minutes where you went four times or one four rings I don't know how many finals you went to but it's just that that constant pressure that constant pressure cooker that just wears you down so when I look at Clay on the bench and 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 Steph and those guys I'm like how do they do it year after year after year and perform at their level it's just amazing that that's what amazes me you know my wonderful producer said you went like right you and Dennis Rodman going ahead. That was that was a tough one. Was that was that the year that he was in the finals going against Dennis? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you were exhausted. See, Dennis is from a planet just outside of Pluto. So know you know he's Yeah, he's definitely from a different planet. He's from a different planet and he's a different a different human. Kinda like you, man. Kinda like you. I I wanna come up to Montana. Um but you know, I, I heard uh, that you guys, you know, everybody has a rifle, and um, we got everyone, plenty of guns. Yeah, you have plenty of guns, and guys walk with a lot of boots. Uh, I don't have cowboy boots. Um, I don't eat meat. I don't know if I can go to Montana. What size shoe are you? I might have a pair of boots you can wear. Oh, oh, Nike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I, I went to a Shaq rap concert in Kalispell, Montana, 20 years ago. What? He, if you ask him, he'll tell you a funny story. We So Phil... Oh, that's right. Phil tells lake. that story. He came home and Shaq was jumping on his trampoline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we 
Howie Long's a real close friend of mine. He's, got, he's godfather to my son. He has a house here also for 25 years. We've been coming here. Wow. So we see a poster in the, the town where we're at, Shaq putting on a rap concert in an hour away. So we go. We, I mean, like, I, can't, I love Shaq. I mean, I've known him since he was 15 in San Antonio. So we go, Howie and I and his three boys, and we're in the audience. There's probably 200 people at a rodeo stadium. Shaq comes out and starts going into his rap songs, and he sees me in the middle of his first song, and it stops him dead in his tracks. <laughs> he, just, he just stops the song. And he can't believe. He goes, Brick, he goes, what are you doing here? Like, you're not supposed to be here. And he, he walks to the back of the stage and kind of gathers himself and goes back into the song. And he looks at me again like 30 seconds later, and he sees Howie Long standing right next to me. He stopped the song again. He goes, Howie Long? <laughs> <laughs> we are dying laughing. And then he gathered himself. He brought the kids up on the stage. And we have pictures of this. It's just, I give him a hard time every time I see him about it. Yeah, it, Montana. You know, I've never been to Montana. I haven't been to Mississippi either, so don't feel bad. I haven't been to Mississippi. I saw the movies. <laughs> no... I get Mississippi. But Montana is a good state. Montana, I mean, it, we... It's a friendly, loving state. We, we, we have a, a wonderful time. The lake we're on is 187 miles of shoreline. So it's a huge body of water. It's just nothing but fun. You'd have a ball. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. 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 I am such a city kid. And I, I would love to. Uh, but is there a flight or do I have to like, can I take a, a, they got a private airport? Not that I'm bragging about private planes <laughs> or anything, but that you could also rent them through me. But can you I, ride a horse? I'm seven foot, bro. <laughs> I'm seven foot. Like, you'd be crazy to watch a horse with six legs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, I had my legs running with the horse's leg. It's just not going to go. But I, <laughs> and I'm an animal activist. I don't know if we, if animal activists even ride horses. But uh, I, I, I get some stirrups. I think I used to like riding horses. Um, at, the, at the circus. Yeah. We had Alvin Robertson. Remember Alvin Robertson? Yeah, where's where's Alvin? Yeah, he's, over in, he's living in England somewhere. But we had him up here. Larry Kustoviak was close with him. I was close with him. Larry's from this area, and we put him on a horse. And the horse, he got kind of scared, and the horse got kind of scared, and they started going at it. And Alvin ended up underneath his neck, with his legs wrapped around on the saddle, and his arms. Choking the horse. <laughs> I'm choking the horse out. <laughs> you can't say you uncle. Can't make this up. You can't make this up. We saw him running around for a good three minutes, which felt like three hours. Him not knowing what to do, the horse not knowing what to do, and finally Alvin let go of the horse, and the horse took off, and we didn't see him for four days. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you why. That horse was on some. All right. Hey, Frank, I appreciate you, man, and we will talk right. again. And uh, stay alive, brother. And I can't wait to come up to the lake. Helicopter, though. I love you. Helicopter. I'm not not doing those (laughs) long rides.